On this week's episode of The Splash, we have the value of art, the place for seniors, and the innovation of health. The Splash is a production of Civic Center TV. We're a news magazine that covers everything from local news to feature stories. Also that we can bring you the latest from the greater West Bloomfield area. And now, let's dive into The Splash. Hi, I'm Brooke Allen. Welcome to The Splash. Thank you for being with us. The JCC's gallery hosted two exhibits tied together by a special installation. Jay Kustash stopped by to hear about both Paperworks and Climb. Ah, uh, another cold, freezing, snow-filled Michigan fall. You know, weather like this really makes me want to go uh, see some art. So right now we have two exhibits up. One is called Climb, and that is by local artist Megan Jackson. It's a solo show for her, all two-dimensional pieces except for the center, which has a three-dimensional installation. And it's really special because this is her first time creating uh, a three-dimensional piece like this. On the lower level, we have a group show of seven artists, all working with paper, and that exhibit was curated by Megan Jackson. Uh, we also have a display of the big heads on loan from the Detroit Parade Company. Megan has worked on Climb for many years, and during that time, her work has changed and evolved. Um, so what you're looking at here is the last five years um, of my work in terms of series. Mm -hmm. um, the idea was originally to begin working with water, and the ideas of water and the power of water played against the grid, you know, representing really people and, and the analytical side of, mm -hmm. of work. The early pieces began about four years ago. As the world got louder, which it did, and more combative, my colors got brighter. And the grid that had started out to be just a few lines that separated the viewer really from the, the power of water started to get louder and bigger and pushed more and they wound up at the end of this series broken in pieces on the ground. As Megan's own life changed so did her art and looking at the work you can see precisely when certain life events took place as she explains. So as this was being worked on or as, as, as I was working on this my husband became very ill and Consequently, what started to happen was that the water symbolism started turning into double helixes. I started thinking much more about, about life and death, about you know, people in general. Um, when he passed away, the figures turned into bones and hearts, and that ends the series. Mm -hmm. the, um, the sculpture installation, Climb, mm -hmm. is really the last piece that I did. Okay. And it's, it's really the three-dimensional expression of the figures that are in these paintings. Yeah, you know, every exhibit we do is completely different from one to the next. I always tell people, if you come in and you don't like something, come back in, a, in two months. Um, we really pride ourselves on doing something completely different from one to the next, and even if we do a show like paper, we try to do it differently than one would expect and use some you know, a lot of creativity in finding artists and putting them together and um, showing showing them in a way where they may have not shown before or with artists that they haven't shown before. Wow, I am so glad that I got to see some art today. You know, any day I can see some art is a good day. Now, back to working and living in the snow. Reporting for The Splash, I'm Jay Kustash. You can find more information on our website at civiccentertv.com slash climb some paper. Next, we learn about a new senior center by WB Parks that will be improving the lives for seniors in our community. And Ryan Youngla visited the Orchard Mall to get the story. I'm here at Orchard Mall inside West Bloomfield Park's new senior services location called Connect, where we get a sneak peek on what's to come. Over the years, our senior programming has just really taken off. We've been able to fill several different trips and different class opportunities that we've put out there. And what we realized though, we didn't have a one destination space for seniors to come to. Combined with our newly put together Senior Services Advisory Board and a lot of the feedback that we got from those volunteers that serve on that board is it kept circling back to a space. We need a dedicated space. So here we are. We landed in a 7,000 square foot space uh, in Orchard Mall in the northwest corner. 
We have an exterior a door to the facility, so it's not, you don't access the space in the mall. You do access it via the parking lot. It's very near to a traffic light, which is uh, very attractive, uh, getting in and out of the mall space. And we have plenty of parking here. What we're first doing is moving all of our senior services over to Connect. Right now, all of our uh, current classes, drop-in programs, and events are spread out at least to three different facilities within West Bloomfield Parks, and then we also rented space in the community to host um, other programs. Our vision is for 2020 is to really hear the feedback from our seniors. What do they want in their community? This is their backyard neighborhood uh, space, and we want to plan things that they want to come to. So it is gonna be an evolution of things, So, but I feel that the first uh, lineup that's gonna be offered in our winter brochure is, is going to offer the blend of some of uh, the routine things, but then they're gonna see a few new things. We are so excited to be offering all the great new things we're gonna have here at Connect. One of the programs we're gonna have is a travel series, which will be a talk series, which we're looking forward to. And we're also going to have weekly lunches, which we are gonna start on January 22nd. And we will be offering a lunch where people can come in. They will be prepaying but, and make a reservation for, but we're really looking forward to being able to have folks here, have a nice lunch, be able to relax and enjoy each other's company. Another uh, one of our programs will be a program called Exercise Your Mind, and that's going to be a new um, series. And then we have our drop-in programs, which we've had running for a while, but they've been in different locations. So we're going to have our um, line dance program, ping pong here at Connect. We're going to have the open game room and also stretch and tone, which will all be offered here at Connect. With all this new exciting information, it sheds light on the future of Connect and what it can and will offer to the West Bloomfield community. This has been Ryan Younglove reporting for The Splash. For more, you can visit civiccentertv.com slash seniors connect. Later in the show, we hear about a new approach to health and a bargain forth with a dog trainer. Don't go away. You're watching The Splash on Civic Center TV. This hour of programming is brought to you in part by Henry Ford West Bloomfield Hospital. Ten years ago, Henry Ford Health System celebrated the grand opening of its West Bloomfield Hospital. Since then, they've celebrated innovative new technologies, medical breakthroughs, and unique approaches to health and healing. To learn more about Henry Ford West Bloomfield Hospital, visit henryford.com slash westbloomfield10. Henry Ford West Bloomfield Hospital is a proud sponsor of Civic Center TV, television that's close to home. And now, back to The Splash on Civic Center TV. Welcome back to The Splash. I'm Brooke Allen. Thank you for being with us. Profile by Sanford is bringing innovative health techniques to everyone in our community. And Tyler Keefe stopped by the West Bloomfield location to bring us the story. Kristen Armstrong recently opened her Profile by Sanford franchise in West Bloomfield Township, culminating her passion for a healthy lifestyle with her desire to help other people and forming a connection with her past areas of expertise. We're the most complete solution for healthy weight loss and healthy living. Our program was designed by physicians and researchers and is based on what science tells us are the key factors to um, sustainable and immediate weight loss. Mm -hmm. My background's actually in neuroscience, so a little bit different than this, but I have a true appreciation for things that are backed by science and research because there are a lot of things that um, are just false information circulating around. Yeah. So, you know, it's important for me personally to be helping people and, and doing something to change other people's lives. And I, there's a really great opportunity for this here. Research and scientific findings only take you so far. Kristen and her team understand that the individual is as important in determining a program as the science and make that a key element of building their clients' programs. As of right now, we do have two certified health coaches. Their names are Karen and Brooke. They're awesome. They've helped change a lot of lives so far. Um, they work individually with each one of our members. And so, you know, that looks very different for each person just because it really is customized. And our coaches really do help each person with whatever obstacles they have, whether it's vacations or weddings, or maybe they are really, you know, having a hard time in their lives or they're trying to overcome a bad habit. So those coaching appointments are customized to that person, and our coaches do a really good job of 
individualizing and, and helping each member. The coaching is a really important part of our program and it's a reason why our members are so successful. So our membership is for one year, so you have access to your coach for a year. So it is weekly coaching and we have some people who come in and want to lose 10, 15 pounds and we have some people who are looking to lose over 150. So those people's journeys are going to be very different. So it's, it's totally based on the individual. But establishing a healthy lifestyle is more than just losing weight. We do build nutrition, activity, and lifestyle plans for our members. So it's not just about weight loss. It's also about being able to sustain it after. So in many of the cases, our protocols are broken into different phases. And when you reach your goal weight, you're not done with us. We're going to continue to work with you. And our goal is for you to be able to sustain your weight loss and be able to do it on your own. And it really is a customized experience for each person. But beyond the customization and individuality, Kristen contends one of her business's most important important roles in the community is helping people understand facts in a world of endless information. There are a lot of, there's a lot of false information out there in the community that, um, that is just not correct about health and wellness and here at Profile we're really helping people not only lose weight but change their overall healthy lifestyle so not only can they lose it but they can sustain it and, and live it just an overall healthier lifestyle. At the shops at Old Orchard in West Bloomfield Township, I'm Tyler Keefe, reporting for The Splash. To learn more on this story, you can visit civiccentertv.com slash profile health. And now it's time for our Civic Center TV event update. We provide you with upcoming events going on in our community. And for a look at additional events, visit civiccentertv.com slash events. Hey you, let's talk every Wednesday from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Come improve your English language skills at the West Bloomfield Public Library. These talks are facilitated by a tutor from the Oakland Literacy Council, and you can stop by any time during the length of the event. Registration is free. For more information, visit westbloomfieldlibrary.org. Bye Bye Birdie, the comedy musical coming to the Berman Center of the Performing Arts December 11th to December 15th at 7.30 p.m. The show is put on by the J Players of the Jewish Community Center. Tickets are $18. For more information, go to the Berman.org. Frog and Toad, the two legendary icons, are coming to West Bloomfield Wednesday, December 11th from 11 a.m. to 11.45. Visit the West Bloomfield Public Library to listen to this interactive story time that also includes a meet and greet with Frog and Toad. No registration is required. For more info, go to westbloomfieldlibrary.org. Dispose of prescription drugs with Operation Medicine Cabinet, happening year-round in West Bluefield, Kego Harbor, and Orchard Lake, and takes place at the police departments of the three communities. Disposing of drugs is completely anonymous. Open 24-7 in West Bluefield, Tuesdays and Thursdays, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. in Kego Harbor, and Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. in Orchard Lake. For more information, visit oakgov.com or call your local police. That's it for this week's highlights. You can find more events online at civiccentertv.com slash events and see everything going on in the greater West Bloomfield area. We're going to take a short break, but when we return, I'll sit down with Keith Fishman and his dog Thor from Henry Ford West Bloomfield Hospital. Don't go away. You're watching The Splash on Civic Center TV. You want it, you got it. Civic Center TV has been bringing you live coverage of your local municipal meetings for years. Now you can catch a replay of those meetings the following day at 1 o'clock and again on Saturdays and Sundays at 9 a.m. If that's not enough, you can also visit civiccentertv.com slash meetings to view a whole list of on-demand township board meetings and keep up to date on the most recent developments in your local government. Giving you more, it's Civic Center TV television that's close to home. And now, back to The Splash on Civic Center TV. Welcome back to The Splash. I'm joined this week by Keith Fishman and Thor from the Henry Ford Therapy Dog Program. And uh, welcome. Thank you so much for being Thank here. Thank you for having us. So this is, it's not often we have a, a dog on the show, I must tell you. <laughs> I would imagine. <laughs> exactly. But this isn't just any dog. This is a special dog. Uh, tell me about Thor. Thor uh, works at Henry Ford Hospital as a therapy dog. In order to be able to do that, Thor has to be a certified therapy dog, which means he needed the training for obedience and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. He also had to be tested by a recognized therapy dog organization, pass that test. Then he had to go into Ford Hospital, pass an evaluation at Henry Ford Hospital, and then have be trained for Henry Ford Hospital to be a therapy dog in their facility. So he's gone through quite a lot. He has. He's got some pretty good certifications. Earned, yes, he does. He's earned his job. So he is how old? 
Thor is seven years old, and he's been working at the hospital since he was a year old, which is the youngest a dog can get certified as a therapy dog. Okay, and you are kind of in charge of this whole program, right? I am, and it's a wonderful <laughs> program to be in charge of. Our program has 30 dogs total. That is three dogs that are owned by the facility, uh, and uh, the other dogs that are owned by their handlers who have also gone through the whole process of getting their dog trained, certified, evaluated by the hospital, and then trained to work in the hospital. Okay, so tell me what is the number one priority of a therapy dog? Smiles. Really? The idea of a therapy dog is a hospital is a pretty scary place in a lot of ways. It's people that aren't feeling well. It's people with loved ones that aren't feeling well. It's staff that are doing a very difficult job uh, in a lot of stress. The idea for the therapy dog is for them to come up, visit, be non-judgmental, be loving, and just be there to promote some smiles. And I tell everybody what the dog, uh, when they go in there and they get a smile, they just did their job. Nice. So I'm, can, you mentioned the staff, and it's funny, I didn't think about that really, but I mean, even when a staff member or a doctor sees a therapy dog walk by, I bet you they smile too. Right? Oh, exactly. And some of his biggest fans and some of the biggest fans of the program are, in fact, the staff. They get a chance to see them. And if I'm ever in the hospital without my dog, inevitably they're going to look at me and say, where's Thor? <laughs> so, yeah. And they're the ones who chase me down the hall saying, wait, I haven't seen Thor yet today. Or right. they'll chase uh, Benson down the hall and say, I haven't seen Benson today. Let me say hello. They have a pretty high-stress job. They right. have a lot that they have to do. And just to get that momentary respite means an awful lot to them. So tell me um, if somebody was interested in, I mean, are you at your capacity for therapy dogs at the hospital, or are you always looking, or what's the requirements? I'm never at my capacity. <laughs> uh, I'm always looking for new teams to come in. Uh, dogs get older, uh, handlers get older, dogs get sick. So I want as many dogs in the hospital as I can get. Uh, I've never heard anybody tell me we have too many dogs in the hospital. Mm -hmm. So anytime there's a good team or somebody that's certified or wants to get certified and uh, wants help through the process, mm -hmm. if they give me a call at volunteer services at Henry Ford Hospital, I will help them through the process, uh, evaluate them and their dog for the program, train them, and I'd love to have another dog. I'm always looking for a good dog team at the hospital. So what are the handler requirements? I mean, because dogs obviously have to go through all the training too, but so, yes. do, the, so do their owners, well, right? Right, and that's one of the reasons they have to be a certified therapy dog. A certified therapy dog is certified with a specific handler. So if, for instance, a husband and wife both want to handle the dog, to get certified, they each have to get certified as handlers for the dog. Separately? Separately. Okay. Uh, my wife and I are both certified for Thor, and we're both certified for another dog of mine. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they each have to come in to be evaluated because I'm going to evaluate them each with the dog and then they each have to be trained with doing rounds in the hospital individually in order to come into the hospital. Right, and so because it is a hospital and mm -hmm. there's a lot of rules, a lot of regulations, especially yes. privacy issues. Right. So just tell me about that a little bit. Okay, well, the HIPAA laws, for those that don't know, those are the privacy medical laws. Mm -hmm. uh, even uh, for our volunteers, not just dog handlers, but any volunteer, if they happen to walk into a room and they hear something or they find something out, uh, they have to be fully trained on the HIPAA laws themselves, and they have to adhere to the HIPAA laws as if they were a physician or a nurse in the hospital. In my case, if I see somebody in the hospital that I happen to know on my rounds, mm -hmm. I have to stay quiet about the fact that I know that person is hospitalized. It's part of the HIPAA law. Right. So, I mean, there's more than just taking your dog to the hospital. And, yes. I mean, there's a lot involved. So what's the timing of this? How long does it take to, I mean, how long did it take the, uh, Thor to become well, certified? For th a dog can't be certified until they're at least a year old. Okay. Uh, there's different organizations, so there's different certification tests. But most of them, they want to see that the dog is a very obedient dog. It will do what it's asked, when it's asked, how it's asked, even when there's a lot of... Uh, uh, things going on around, a lot of distraction. So they'll test you with wheelchairs and canes and walkers and running children and food right under the dog's nose. Right. <laughs> um, because if you can think about it in a hospital, things can be on the floor that you don't want your dog to touch. Right. So they have to make sure before they're even certified that uh, the dog will respond to the owner's commands. And when I'm in the hospital, because we give a great deal of autonomy in our program, 
I want to see a good, strong connection between the dog and the owner. I want to see that they're nice and stable, that sudden noises or sounds or smells won't take them off center. And if they do get startled, they're back under control in a heartbeat just because it was just a startling issue. Mm. Uh, and that way, and the other piece that I'm always looking for, I want to make sure both the handler and the dog are going to enjoy themselves. And you know, you said that earlier, and I thought that was so interesting because, I mean, while he is going to work per se, you still want him to have He's got a good time, right? He's got to love it. So, Any dog that comes in has to love it. If right. a dog doesn't love being with people, being touched, getting attention, they're not going to be a very good therapy dog. Uh, they're not going to be uh, a dog that's going to go out and seek out the attention. And that's really what we need in the hospital. We don't need people to chase dogs in the hospital. <laughs> right. We need the dogs to come up and say, hi, I'm your buddy. Right. So when he visits a room, how often, how long is he there? In any given room, it depends a great deal. Sometimes it's a quick visit, but sometimes you find out, and this is where I look for good handlers as well, mm -hmm. that people need a little bit of extra time. Sometimes somebody's lonely, a little bit scared. They need a little bit more of an ear. So when we go into a room, all of our handlers have a great deal of choice as far as how much time they need to spend. If they see it's quick in and out, if the doctor's coming in, they're going to move out quickly. But if someone's there alone, maybe a little nervous, needs a little listening ear, an additional shoulder, they can actually spend as much time in there as they want. Oh, so they're not like on a clock and like, they are okay, not. we got to move it, move it, move no, it. No, absolutely. Not like, it's the not whole like point that. is to make people feel better, not to cut them short. Right. So whatever it takes to make them feel better is our job and the dog's job. Right. So tell me something special about Thor. Thor's got a lot of special things about him. He's, he's actually one of the favorites there. We do have the dogs that are the facility dogs, Benson and Hope, that are owned by the hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, Thor has been there for about six and a half years, so he's pretty well known. Mm -hmm. And he's a pretty chill guy, so that means he gets pretty popular. So mm -hmm. it's just a lot of fun when we go in there and people chase me down the hall to say, wait, I haven't seen him yet. I gotta say hi to Thor today. Right. And it's particularly gratifying whether it's staff or a patient or anyone else, when they take a look, they pet him and they go, that is the best part of my day. Mm. And then again, he's done his job, right? He has done his job. He's done he his job, smile. even if he didn't mean to. <laughs> he always means to. <laughs> right. And he actually is real intuitive. He'll figure out how much attention somebody needs and he will do that. If he needs to stay a little further away, he will. If he figures somebody needs a little extra, he'll get real close and maybe lean up against them mm -hmm. a little bit. He has a pretty good feeling of what, what the job needs that moment. Right, right. I think he's falling asleep. <laughs> Are you falling asleep? <laughs> well, it has been a pleasure uh, to meet you and to know what Thor does and all the other dogs that are there. Thank you. And uh, again, if anyone was interested, they need to contact you at... Call at, at Volunteer Services. Okay. And if anybody ever wants to donate to the program, it is fully funded by donations. Oh, uh, it okay. is not funded by the hospital. Okay. It's fully by, by donations, and the staff loves it enough that that's where most of the funding comes right. from, uh, from their own paychecks. But just contact me at Volunteer Services. Uh, let me know you have a nice dog that you want to certify mm -hmm. or that you have a dog that is certified or that you want to be a handler of one of our dogs, and I'd love to speak with you further okay. because I'm always looking for more people. And as far as the donations, I didn't realize that. So people could just donate as well. Exactly. They can go right onto the Henry Ford uh, West Bloomfield website, and they'll see a spot for donations for the uh, Goldman Therapy Dog Program. Okay. And I, real quick, I need to mention that Thor actually has his own little card, so he is pretty, he is pretty much a celebrity. <laughs> he is. <laughs> he is. He's pretty much a celebrity. He has his own card. It's like a baseball card with his picture on it and his name. So Exactly. I told people that if the dog walked into the hospital without me, everybody would know who he is. If I walk into the hospital without the dog, I'm entirely incognito. How funny, huh? <laughs> Well, thank you so much for joining us. It has been a pleasure to meet thank you. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to and, be here. And it has been a pleasure to Thor? meet Thor. He is such a sweetheart. <laughs> That's my good boy. And once again, we've been joined by Keith Fishman and Thor. And next on the show, we learn some new ways to benefit our pets on this week's episode of The Biz. Healthcare is an important issue for most families. But that also includes keeping our smallest family members, our pets, active and vibrant as well. And in this edition of The Biz, we visit Pet Value, a store that caters to keeping our animals as healthy as they can be.
It has become amazingly, increasingly popular, yes. So I think a lot of us feed our pets better than we feed ourselves. And that's anything from grain-free, gluten-free, corn-free, holistic diets, uh, raw food and alternative feeding, frozen food. The pet industry and the pet food industry has changed so much, even in the last 5, 10, 20 years. We all grew up, for the most part, buying food at the grocery store. And we've learned, uh, especially recently, that that food is not going to be the best food for our pets for longevity and living a happy life. We're all familiar with the term holistic, but what exactly does it mean in terms of a pet's diet? A holistic diet is really kind of an all-encompassing diet that includes fresh meats, fresh, fresh vegetables, uh, fresh grains, uh, and is really a whole and all-inclusive diet to be able to take care of a pet uh, in a holistic way. So that holistic approach and really thinking of it, uh, taking care of not just one specific need in their diet, but the pet as a whole. So you think of the ingredients uh, kind of being something that you would serve to your entire family at a, a big Thanksgiving dinner. Food allergies worldwide are on the rise for humans, but pets are not immune to this growing trend. I think people are becoming more aware of pet allergies and food sensitivities and really kind of the, the few things that you can look for in your pet are one, hot spots, so are they having any skin irritation, uh, constant ear infections is another great indicator that your pet might have a food sensitivity or an allergy, licking and chewing at their paws, anytime you're really noticing obvious discomfort, we can help you find an alternative that might be causing that issue or that sensitivity and usually the biggest and easiest way to do that is by switching foods. When pollen, dust mites, mold spores, and other triggers come in contact with a pet skin, they can also trigger allergies, and bathing is a good remedy for treatment of these symptoms. Um, but based on dog breed and how long their coat is, how oily their coat is, yes, we, we love a dog wash, especially for heavier coated breeds, longer hair dogs. So our dog wash is fantastic. You can see behind us, each one of our locations has a hand-painted mural that's specific to the community. We welcome all animals into the dog wash, but we've seen pigs, goats, mini horses, uh, anything that you can bring in. But our dog wash can accommodate up to uh, a giant breed dog. We've had 250, 300 pound mastiffs in the wash, up to our uh, St. Bernard's and then we've got a smaller tub there in the middle where you can bring in your chihuahua and it's easier than doing it in the kitchen sink. For Civic Center TV, I'm Lawrence Nyland. For more episodes of The Biz, visit civiccentertv.com slash the biz. And now it's time for our final segment, Person of the Week, where we celebrate the people in the community who are inspiring and providing toward others. And this week's recipient is Shauna Broida, dietitian from Henry Ford West Bloomfield Hospital. <music> You can find Shauna attending and assisting in the many different cooking demonstrations happening at the hospital. The Demonstration Kitchen offers anyone and everyone specialized classes on how to cook a variety of themed dishes that all focus on improving health. She dedicates her career to benefiting the health and wellness of everyone, and working with the Demonstration Kitchen helps her to achieve this. Using various dieting strategies, her knowledge can help patients and attendees improve their health so they can live happier and more comfortable lives. And this dedication to improving health in the community is what makes her our Person of the Week. And if you know someone who's making a positive difference, let us know and message us on social media with any and all of the suggestions because we want to congratulate and acknowledge those making a difference in our community. That's it for this week's show. You can catch new episodes anytime online in HD at civiccentertv.com, Mondays at 5.30 p.m. at Civic Center TV on Comcast 15 and AT&T Channel 99. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram at Civic Center TV. And you can also listen to me weekdays from 2 to 7 p.m. on WWJ News Radio 950. For all our friends in Sylvan Lake, Orchard Lake, Kego Harbor, and West Bloomfield, I'm Brooke Allen. Thank you for watching The Splash.